capital punishment in China should not be confused with death sentence with reprieve, which is a form of lenient sentencing that is handed down by Chinese courts as frequently as, or more often than, actual death sentences. Death sentence with reprieve is used to emphasize the seriousness of the crime and the mercy of the court, and is sometimes inaccurately added to the number of actual death sentences. Capital punishment was one of the classical five punishments of China's dynastic period. In Chinese philosophy, capital punishment was supported by the legalisms, but its application was tempered by the Confucians who preferred rehabilitation and mercy over capital punishment. Confucius did not oppose capital punishment absolutely, but did take the view that in a well-ordered society based on moral persuasion, capital punishment would become unnecessary. Historically, poorer and lower status Chinese were most often subject to capital punishment. However, Officials and others of high rank were put to death as a means of social control in times of war, internal disarray, or strife. For example, King Wu of the Western Zhu ordered officials who violated royal regulations, failed to carry out their duties, or promulgated innovations to be put to death. 39 military officials were executed following a peasant uprising during the Tang Dynasty. The six gentlemen of the Hundred Days Reform, who advocated social reform in the late Qing dynasty were executed. By both confirmed and estimated data, the number of executions from capital punishment in China is far higher than any other country, while the number per capita is comparable to Vietnam and Singapore, and lower than several other countries, including Saudi Arabia, Iran and Iraq. The number of executions has dropped steadily in the 2000s, and significantly since 2007, when the Supreme People's Court regained the power to review all death sentences. For instance, the DUI Hua Foundation estimates that China executed 12,000 people in 2002, 6,500 people in 2007 and roughly 2,400 in 2013 and 2014. Given conservative and variable estimates of executions in China, executions in China account for more than 58% in 2009 and 65% in 2010 of those worldwide. Capital punishment is a legal penalty in China. It is commonly applied for murder and drug trafficking and is a legal penalty for other offenses. Executions are carried out by lethal injection or by shooting. China, with 55 offenses still punishable by death, is now believed to execute far more people than the rest of the world combined, even though the nation does not release official statistics. At least a dozen foreigners have been executed for drug-related offenses, and many more are on death row. While more countries abolish the death penalty in 2022, the use of capital punishment for drug offenses is going in a markedly different direction, impinging on the likelihood of achieving global abolition. Fewer countries are using the death penalty for drug offenses, but according to a new global report, Executions increased in those that did and took place in proceedings characterized by authoritarianism and secrecy. In its 11th annual report on the death penalty for drug offenses, Global Overview 2021, released mid-March 2022, the International Drug Monitor Harm Reduction International found that eight high-application nations contributed to an increase in known death sentences and executions. The group of countries actively resorting to capital punishment as a central tool of drug control is shrinking, but is also more and more characterized by opacity and secrecy, if not outright censorship. Harm Reduction International confirmed at least 132 executions for drug offenses in 2021, an increase of 336% from the number of known drug executions in 2020. That total, however, 
is likely to represent only a fraction of all drug-related executions carried out globally, because the secrecy shrouding the death penalty in countries such as China, North Korea, and Vietnam makes it impossible to track their execution practices. China executes three Filipinos for drug smuggling. On March 31, 2011, they were Ramon Credo, 42 years old, Sally Villanueva, 33 years old and Elizabeth Batane, 38 years old were three Filipinos who were caught trafficking drugs in China. They were arrested separately in 2008. Authorities said they were carrying package of at least 4 kilograms of heroin to China. The death penalty is usually imposed by local courts and subject to review by the Supreme People's Court, which makes final judgment. In recent years, China has also executed drug traffickers from Britain, Malaysia, Thailand and Japan. China maintains that drug trafficking is a serious offense and it imposes strict punishment on those convicted of the crime. Under Chinese laws, trafficking of 50 grams or more of drugs is punishable by long prison terms. Those convicted of smuggling larger amounts receive life sentences or death. The three, two women and a man, were caught smuggling several kilos of heroin each into China in 2008. Under Chinese law, the trafficking of at least 50 grams of any illicit drug is punishable by death. According to authorities, Credo and Ordinario were caught smuggling at least 4 kilograms each of heroin, while Batane was arrested with almost 7 kilograms. Ramon Credo, Sally Villanueva, and Elizabeth Batain were the first Filipinos to be executed in China for drug trafficking, Philippine officials said. Around 200 more Filipinos are in Chinese jails for drug offenses. Ramon Credo, Sally Villanueva, and Elizabeth Batain were originally scheduled for execution on February 20, 2011. But China agreed to postpone the executions after Philippine Vice President Jojo Marbinet traveled to Beijing to plead on their behalf. The postponement prompted speculations that it was an unprecedented response to various gestures made by the Philippine government. Manila decided not to send a representative to the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony in Oslo, which honored Liu Xiaobo, a Chinese political dissident. In the days before the executions were carried out, prayer vigils and special masses were organized in Manila and other cities in the hope of a miracle reprieve for the three convicts. Days before the executions, Philippine officials made last-ditch efforts, asking that the three Filipinos be spared. President Benigno Aquino Jr. wrote his Chinese counterpart Hu Jintao to ask for clemency. Ramon Credo, Sally Villanueva, and Elizabeth Batane were informed a day prior to their execution that their execution will be carried out the following day, all there were allowed visitation before their execution. Sally Ordinary O Villanueva and Ramon Credo met their families early on the day before they were put to death by lethal injection in Xiamen City in southeastern China. The third Filipino, Elizabeth Batane, was allowed to meet with her relatives hours ahead of her execution in southeastern Shenzhen city. Their visiting families were allowed an hour visitation, according to their families, the Chinese authorities have no mercy, Ordinary Ovilonueva's sister, Melin Ordinario. She said her sister had been blessed by a priest and she said she wants to be forgiven for all her sins, but she insisted that she was a victim. She asked us to take care of her children, to take care of each other, and to help one another. Jason Ordinario, Ordinario, Sally Villanueva's younger brother, said that his sister was hired as a cell phone dealer in Xiamen and was tricked into carrying a bag that had a secret compartment loaded with heroin, allegedly by her job recruiter. Ramon Credo, 42 and Sally Villanueva, 33, were executed in the southern city of Xiamen, while Elizabeth Batane, 38, 
was put to death the same day in Shenzhen, near Hong Kong. China's foreign ministry said that drug trafficking was a serious offense and that justice had been served. The executions come after Amnesty International again slammed China's human rights record and widespread use of the death sentence in its latest annual report on the issue. While China maintains an iron grip on crime with 55 offenses still punishable by death, far more than many other nations, it has scrapped the death penalty for nearly a dozen non-violent crimes including smuggling cultural relics and tax fraud. The Philippine government's appeals for clemency included three letters from President Benigno Aquino III to his Chinese counterpart and a February visit to Beijing by the Vice President which prompted China to postpone the executions by a month. The Philippine government said it was able to prove that a drug syndicate took advantage of the Filipinos. Thank you for watching Death Row.